it's it's brand new. This uh, this room is brand new, so uh, I hope I don't ruin it for anything. <laughs> but anyway, we made the we did the picture. I came home one day and I met Jerry and Luba, and uh, Luba invited me back to the house to, for a cup of tea, and uh, we we're talking about the things that I'm going to be doing. And Jerry said, you know, he has a bit of free time. He could do the same thing with me. And so the career started, the Jerry and Murray career of, of movies and uh, stuff. Well, the first few uh, commercials were just that. They were uh, commercials of several hundred people where you couldn't identify anybody. But uh, we were happy. We were getting paid because uh, I just looked at a little notebook that I had uh, that indicates how much we got paid. And I think the first job we did, we got, we worked about 12 or 14 hours, and we got $38. Wow. Taxable. <laughs> so that was an idea of whether we wanted to go into this career. But we, we decided that we were the state non-union, and that was the reason we got so little. But anyway, we continued with that. And each time we did a little commercial of some sort, uh, we met different people and spoke to different people and found out about different uh, uh, different agents. And one of the agents was Sylvia Fay, who turned out to be the largest non-union agent in New York City. So we contacted her and got in touch with a fellow by the name of Marcos, who, for some reason or other, liked us very much, and started to put us into more and more about, uh, about twice a month. He wow. says, I can't put you in more than that, because the people watching the show will begin to recognize you, uh -huh. and that won't be right, because it is, you don't always have the same people sitting in the gallery or the courtroom. So we started making trips to Chelsea, New York. I think it was 12th, 12th Street and 23rd, 12th Avenue and 23rd Street. And that's where they had uh, a, a, a replica of a courthouse. And that's where we did most of our work. And uh, so one time I was a judge and uh, one time I the jury and Jerry did also. So, and that was the beginning of our career with uh, with one order. Uh, we couldn't take any of it because after we did the show, we we really didn't know when they were going to show it. But I tried to take most of the stuff, uh, commercials that I knew, uh, as when I knew the show was going to be on. But the uh, one order I couldn't because they never told us when. And uh, I think that's how that's how we met, and that's how uh, the career of Jerry and Murray started. And now we would like to stand. Who's going to introduce the next subject? In uh, non-speaking roles that Jerry and Murray were as extras, there was a talent that was necessary, and that was taking direction from somebody who says, you do this and you do that, and don't do this and don't do that. In the first video we're going to see is a 30 second commercial in which Jerry is featured, and you might say, well, I could do that. Well, Jerry will tell you later that how many takes they did to get this exactly the way the director wanted.
swing and it's going over.
Hi, George. And George, your pulse rate was back to normal by the time we finished checking it. Now, your electrocardiogram, I think, you were experiencing the abnormal flutterings that we call atrial fibrillation. Now, I want you to take some aspirin. I want you to make an appointment with your cardiologist as soon as you can. Uh, and if you feel those symptoms from last night coming back, I want you to call your doctor or come back to the ER immediately. Okay? Yes, doctor. Three weeks later, we're visiting our daughter in New York. A musical, I'm shopping, that sort of thing. But George says he needs to sit down. Well, I took one look at him, jumped up, and had one of those cabs to take him to the hospital. You've suffered what's known as a TIA. Uh, you're not in atrial fibrillation. That's what they said you had last time. Last time? Yes. Uh, I had a uh, dizzy spell at night, and my heart was beating like you couldn't imagine. Of course, we moved the hospital right away, and everything was normal. So the doctor gave me a couple of aspirin and sent me home. I have an appointment with a cardiologist next week, actually. Interesting. Well, everything looks okay now, but uh, do make sure you see your cardiologist as soon as possible. I'm going to give you an echocardiogram and a duplex skin, okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks. It's really good. So we will have to do it. Absolutely. Because he didn't like what they did with me, and uh, 
they redid my makeup and then we went on. And so that's, and the only problem with what I'm talking to you about is that Sidney Lumet uh, did not have the longevity that Warren Orr had. He had set out to have a continuing uh, episode type uh, TV show, but it just didn't work out. But I thought I was on my way to Hollywood. <laughs> and, uh, so that's the way that ended. That was the end of that. Yeah. We, we don't have any uh, footage from uh, the movie that you had made with, with our Sunshine Boys as Hasina, but we do have a still picture of them, which we're going to look at now. And we're going to have a little contest. And whoever, well, no, we won't. We'll ask you really. Um, I'm going to pause the picture, the still picture, of these two guys as I see them. And then we're going to see if you can figure out who is the The reason you don't see any uh, movie shots is because the, uh, the show was never successful. So it, it was never reached the air. But uh, the rehearsal was a lot of fun. Tony Curtis, and uh, it was done at the uh, JFK. 
So uh, we're hanging around waiting for Tony Curtis to show up, and suddenly he shows up limping. Oh. He has sprained his ankle, and they uh, they canceled the shoot. I got paid for it, but uh, still there was anything. But I, I started to talk to Tony Curtis, and I said to him, that, you know, when I was very young, they used to say I looked like Tony Curtis. He says, you poor guy. <laughs> Anyway, but that was, uh, uh, that movie never got shot. There's a lot of stuff that ends up on the cutting room floor that you never really see. Incidentally, the Hasidic, uh, the Smith Brothers you see here, uh, was taken in a, in a courthouse called One Center Street. Uh, we mean, Jerry, uh, Jerry and I have a difference on where that was shot. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the, the name of the courtroom, and as a matter of fact, right as on the entrance to the courtroom was one center street, which is a pretty famous street in New York. Uh, what's next, uh, Professor? Okay. Wrapping up a little bit of research on the, on the movie, he's got these guys were in, uh, one with Tony, Tom Selleck, Richard Lewis, Alan King, Danny Aiello and Woody Allen. The Woody Allen movie was called Deconstructing Harry. Um, filmed in the basement of St. John's Church. So, I see also Sam Waterston. Well, Sam Waterston was on the walk off. I thought this was a good thing. Murray, um, after I passed away, Murray lived in Florida for several years and became very active in a uh, theater group there. And occasionally the theater group would have parts of their shows on a local television station on the Florida West Coast. So we have a short scene where Murray is the father of the two sons who have sold a story to a radio show. And Murray is very, very angry as the father. So we're going to see a couple of minutes of that. And I, as I say, I, I think you'll be very surprised just how talented these guys are. In this scene, we're about to see the entire family has just heard the first radio script written by their two sons, Eugene and Stanley. Murray Sarah, playing the part of Jack Jerome, questions the boys, and they want to know what he thinks about the radio program. What did you say about the husband? What did you say about him on the show? Nothing. In the our program. What does the lady say your husband does for a living? He's in lady pajamas. And I'm in lady's raincoats, right? Are you going to pretend you don't know what's happening between your mother and I? I don't know what she tells you. I don't know what story she fills your head with. God, I don't know what she says to you about me. She never said anything to me, I swear. But you know what's going on, don't you? In a house with walls like this, you know everything. Well, let me tell you something. No matter if these walls have ears, and the house next to that next door have them, and the house next door have them. If a community like this, everybody knows everybody else's business. So that happens when the people who drag the beach turn on the radio program, and they hear a woman on the sounds familiar. And she tells them her husband's in ladies' pajamas. They understand what you're saying. They know what the innuendo is. But they hear something like that on the radio. And they know that the two sons of the, of the man in ladies' pajamas wrote the program. What are they thinking, huh? Tell me what they're thinking. I know what you're getting at, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Can you promise me that? Can you give me a written guarantee? The only thing that people like better than Gotham is Phyllis. And that's what they heard on the show tonight. What are you talking about? That's crazy. I'll never forgive either one of you for ridiculing me in front of my friends, in front of my neighbors, 
in front of strangers. You will never know how many people I called to tell them to turn on the radio program because I was so proud of my two sons. That's a mistake. I won't make it again. You from Brighton Beach Memoirs, and uh, I'm, I'm real proud of that particular uh, uh, speech, because uh, I read that? Did you ever talk to your two sons again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. We, we just remain up. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, I have a, uh, where is this? I was part of a community playhouse called Stage West. And uh, in the summertime, when uh, all the slumbers went home, and I was one of them, uh, they had uh, voting on the best actor, the best uh, supporting actor, and, and so forth, just like the Emmys. And so while I was away one summer, I was voted as the best supporting actor. And I received a what they call a hammy. <laughs> Excuse the expression, uh, but a uh, hammy. But I was very, very proud of this. But, and that's one of the parts that uh, I got the, got the award for. And uh, thank you. Thank you. The next uh, clip is clear that sometimes Jerry and Murray went on a shoot hired to do something, and they got roped into something that they didn't plan on. Uh, in this one, this has a, a, quite a serious nature to it. They were on a show on USA Network, uh, and uh, they were told they were going to be eating donuts. Uh, but then something happens during the show, and it's really quite dramatic. <laughs> My recollection is that we were so to take them off the street and ask to go into this uh, coffee shop, which was really part of a, uh, uh, a theater. And uh, this young, uh, young lady there was doing interviews of celebrities. And as the celebrities stopped by, uh, she would sit down and talk to them. And then the, there was a, a telephone audience that called in and uh, with certain questions. And, uh, and she would ask each one of the contestants that were there, including Jerry and I, uh, the question that was asked of the day. And one of the questions uh, that you are going to see now is what is the, uh, the greatest thing that you've ever done? And uh, that's what you want to see.
this next little sequence. And that is to give you an idea of just how after Jerry and Murray were. It's as if they should have taken an apartment in the city because uh, they really were bouncing back and forth between here and the city early in the morning and then late at night. Is that correct? <clears throat> and um, so here's a bit of, of uh, what happened in 1997 uh, in, in Jerry's uh, case. I just just want to tell you about this uh, this picture. When Jerry and I used to go into the city and uh, knock on doors of different agents. We'd have our headshots like this, and uh, Jerry would uh, wait in the car, and I would go upstairs, and we'd take turns. And uh, as one agent, we went up to see, and I spoke to him, and we were told him we were looking for extra work, and I handed him two headshots, like the one you see here, and there's one of me. So the agent turned around and hands one back to me. I said, what's this for? He says, I only need one. <laughs> he said, they're both in two different people. And he said, boy, they look the same to me. And that's what was happening all the time. They kept thinking we were brothers or twins or more than that. But anyway, that's the story behind that. Murray, tell how you were an extra in a baseball park on a cold day. Oh. Oh, okay, that's right, we don't have uh, those, those pictures here. There was a movie uh, called uh, The Name of the Game. It was with uh, Kevin Costner, and uh, it was the story, uh, for those who follow baseball, it was the story about a, a, a famous game between the Detroit Tigers and the New York Yankees, and it was about their pitching skills. The two pitchers were going against each other. And they shot the film at the Yankee Stadium. We were there 10 days in November. Throws our tuchuses off. <laughs> and, uh, but we had to take our jackets off each time they filmed, because who goes to see a baseball game in a parlor, you know? <laughs> so each time they filmed, they had, they had us take our jackets off. And uh, then, uh, uh, we had put our jackets back, took our jackets off, and they moved us from section to section, you know, center field, left field, right field, and between each, each one of us, like between Jerry and I, we had cardboard cutouts of a human being, so that when they took the shot from a distance, instead of 3,000, it looked like 6,000 people. <laughs> So uh, that's, that's how they got the crowd, and you, you would never know the difference. So if you paid to see that movie, you would take it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I got so sick that time. But, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was 10 days of freezing. <laughs>
the, the food was really, really good. Vivian, um, you ought to come up here a second. Please. Do you also have porta potties for you for the 12 hours? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that part. But <laughs> Maybe that was 65. <laughs> I just, want, I just want you to verify that there is a channel that shows law and order constantly. That's what I just want to know. Just, how do you know that you believe us? Um, it was Tuesday.
I, I didn't make another dime. They ran it for five years. Yeah. And because I was non union, they kept showing it over and over again. And the, I, had to, I had to be satisfied with $500. Oh. So, so but, but that was it. It was, it was what they call, it's what they call a buyout. Uh, they pay me uh, what I thought was an exorbitant amount. And, uh, and then they could do whatever they want with it. They ran it for a very, very long time. But uh, that was the first part. And oh, one of the first commercials that we both did, and I think we got $100 each for this one. And some of you may remember there was a, in, there was a commercial for Imodium AD. Yes. You remember? <laughs> Imodium AD is for <laughs> is the modern day x -Lax. Thank you. 
told them to do and not to do this with the day. This was another one of the uh, agent called and says, uh, this job is for you, you know. And uh, I said, uh, another audition? She says, you're going to get it. She knows I'm going to get it. Anyway, I, it was for the, uh, uh, the uh, Ed Sullivan, the audition was in the Ed Sullivan building that you see all the time for the Letterman show. And uh, I went down for the audition and I spoke to this fellow by the name of uh, Jeremy Weiner, uh, I guess, and uh, we uh, were talking a while, and, uh, and he says, okay, so I'll call you, I'll let you know. I got back on the train, came home, and Perry met me at the railroad station, picked me up, and as I'm getting out of the train, she says, go back, go back. I said, what do you mean go back? She says, they just called. They want you to come back. They liked me for the part. So I was very happy, but there was no trains going back, and I wasn't going to drive in. So they, I called them up, and they said, OK, this was a Monday. Come back on Wednesday. I made an appointment on Wednesday and did the show on that Wednesday evening. Uh, you know, they tape it at uh, like 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and then they show it at 11 o'clock at night. And uh, so they like, had full head of hair, and the shtick that uh, Schaefer, the band leader, was going to do was hairpiece or no hairpiece. I think a lot of you here saw that particular episode of uh, on, on the Letterman show. And uh, they gave me a script. I was to stand behind that curtain that comes down, and uh, the script was two lines. And the one line was, this is not a hairpiece. And the instructions were, do not smile, do not laugh, don't do anything. Just stand there with a serious face and say, this is not a hairpiece. And that was it. And the curtain came down, and I'm standing behind the curtain. They lifted the curtain, and they asked uh, Letterman, uh, is that a hairpiece or not? And he said, nah, it's not a hairpiece. I have to tell you that before I went behind the curtain, they had me in makeup, again, not with a beard, though. They had me in makeup, and uh, he fixed my hair so that it really, really looked like it was a hairpiece. And then Leatherman said, that's, that's, that's a hairpiece, absolutely a hairpiece. And then they closed the curtain, I walked away, and then they told me to go back because he wanted to take a second look. He took a second look, he says, it's a matter of semantics, right? Don't give away the end. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and. Uh, you can see it for yourself. Okay. So anyway, want to hear this piece I have? Yeah, please. In this piece, we're going to uh, test your powers of. Perception and observation. Uh, this is what we're going to Well, you may have keen powers of observation, but limited powers of perception. Is that true? Oh, no, sure. So they are the two are that are... Uh, they're, they're not synonymous. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're, but they're collectively... Well, Sonny, I happen to have very highly tuned uh, senses of both uh, observation and... Okay, well, we'll just see. We'll see what happens. How uh, many people do you think are actually watching right now? I think people have pretty much flipped over to Jay Leno. I think so. Yeah. All right, anyway. <laughs> this... It's a little piece we call hair piece, not a hair. Oh, hair piece, not a hair piece. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring somebody out, and Dave, you're going to have 30 seconds to decide right. if this person is wearing a hair piece. Okay, where's, or, my, where's my blindfold? Or, no, you don't. No, you no. watch. You watch the report. I don't need a blindfold. Yeah, you evaluate whether it's a hair piece or if it's the person. Looking forward to the blindfold. Hair. Here's what we're going to do. Put 30 seconds up. Put 30 seconds up on the clock. Yeah, and 
raised this thing, and here's the person. Are you ready? It's a hairpiece. It's a hairpiece. It's a hairpiece. It's a hairpiece. You're going to have to start the club right It's a hairpiece. All right, let's see. Now, now it's And it's not a staffer. He's never worked here. This guy is blonde, but he's never worked here. I feel his hair. Okay, all right. Now, sir, please, if you will, please, sir, tell us, is this a hairpiece or a non-hairpiece? It is not a hair. Oh, come on! A hair piece. A hair. Join us next week for Pope Over, not a He's lying! No, no, he says it. Come on, it. take it off! No, 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 he says it is not a hair piece, and you are wrong. <laughs> That's how we play hair piece, not a hair piece. <laughs>
Yeah, you may want to just stop by and uh, make a donation. But this is our way also of uh, supporting our younger people. Donate online. What's that? You can donate online. You can donate online. So we'll have flyers outside for you. And again, thank you. Watch for the. This is about the fifth, uh, the fifth amazing story. Everyone has been better than the. Than, uh, the this is uh, wonderful, wonderful. So thank you, Yashikov. Yes,